What's up, everybody? It's Ronnie, RR21 Tactical. Today, we're going to talk about basic fundamentals of uh, holding a firearm. So today, we're going to go over grip. Uh, I want to thank everybody for look, for watching and everybody for subscribing. Please tell your friends about us. Click like and subscribe at the bottom. It's going to be a lot of content coming out uh, ASAP due to everything that's going on. Uh, I kind of took my time releasing some things, but now it's on and popping. Today... We're gonna be using a Sig Sauer 226 single action, double action pistol made famous or, no, or notably used by United States Secret Service or United States Navy SEALs. Shout out to the Navy SEALs, man. Love yous. All right, thanks for your service, gentlemen. All right, today uh, we wanna make sure, number one, weapons on, weapon is clear. Nothing in the chamber. Uh, rule number one, treat every gun as if it's loaded. Make sure you can see through it. All that good jazz. Make sure nothing's in the brain. All right. Decock the pit, decock the hammer. Uh, single action, double action. Before we get into some fundamentals, double action, single action. What that means is double action means that the, that the uh, hammer does two motions when you pull the trigger. When you pull the trigger back, it goes forward, so that's two actions, one, two. Then you have single action, which means when you pull the trigger, it goes bang, goes in, I mean, uh, hammer goes up and comes back. So when you're in double, when you're in single action mode, that's all that happens. Whenever dealing with a single action, double action uh, firearm, including uh, single actions like 1911, stuff like that, it's important, keep that finger off the trigger, rule number two, because you're talking three pounds of pressure to pull the trigger versus maybe 10 to 13. Okay, today, we're gonna cover grip. Alrighty, when gripping your firearm, you always wanna make sure that your finger is on the frame, indexing the frame, finger off the trigger at all times. Your trigger, uh, uh, my buddy Brandon in New Orleans at uh, NOLA attack, I'm gonna steal your, uh, your saying, your finger needs to be one of two places whenever you hold a firearm. Either it's at home, it's at work. If you're not at work, you're at home. If you're at home and you get that call to go to work, then you go to work. Home, work. So in other words, you do not put your finger on that trigger until you are ready to destroy what is in front of it. All right, now, you wanna make sure you've got a firm grip, not tight where you're shaking and all of that, cause you're basically gonna be end up healing the gun doing that. You wanna take your right hand, firm grip like a handshake, left hand. In the front, fingers closed, okay? Thumbs on, on the opposite side of the weapon, meaning if you are right-handed, the thumbs go on the left-hand side. If you're left-handed, thumbs go on the right side. I don't know if y'all can see that. All right, and then what you do is, depending on your stance, you've got isosceles, which is basically you stand forward, you stand basically legs apart, or you've got weaver, modified weaver. Um, a lot of people, when they use isosceles, which is basically your legs shoulder width apart, or a triangle, triangular shooting shape, people will just hold a gun tight. Me, I still push, pull the weaver method because, you know, number one, I was taught on a weaver stance. Um, so I've got a lot of weaver bad habits that I include with isosceles. What works for me, works for me. It may not work for you or may not work for others out there. It may work for you, who knows? That's for up to you to figure out. Once you have the weapon, you have a firm grip, thumbs on each side. You want your thumbs on the frame as well. To me, it helps me stabilize the weapon. It gives me that shooting lane right here. If in case you can, it's kind of hard to see here. It's a shooting lane, there we go. It's a shooting lane. So that way, in case I have to point shoot, I know when I bring my gun up eye level, it's already on target. Okay, you make sure that you have your wrist locked when you, when you extend out to a high ready or to the ready position, you lock your elbows, okay? That helps manage the recoil. Now, one thing I do is uh, some people have equal pressure on all four fingers. I add a little more pressure to my bottom two fingers, my ring and my pinky. Reason being that just helps me manage the recoil. Um, this, was a, uh, this was a technique that was taught to me by a competition shooter actually, and it works for me. Again, what works for me may not work for you. 
figure out how you want it. There's no right way, there's no wrong way about grip. The only right way is to make sure that your weapon is tight to number one, it helps those shells eject out, keeps from getting jams, and it keeps the shells from coming back and hitting you in the face. There go to the right, stuff like that. Then what you do is, uh, for aiming up your sights, okay, you see there's the front sight here. I don't know if you can see, front sight, rear sight. When you're aiming, you want your front sight in focus, rear sight kind of blurry. Your target's gonna be kind of blurry. The human eye is only, is designed to focus on one thing at a time in a straight line. Um, we'll get uh, with Doc Holliday about that when he can explain that better than I can because he was actually a med student. Um, always make sure that front sight's in focus. Some people close one eye, some people don't close any eyes. Uh, depending on distance or time of day, uh, it depends on what I'm doing. I'm doing low light shooting. I close my my uh, right eye. I'm left eye dominant, bottom cross eye dominant. What I do is low light, dark shooting, one eye closed. So why I can save my night vision so that way I can open up and I can still see what's going on. Um, daylight, up close and personal, both eyes open. Distance shooting, um, which is a rarity, but you know I still practice that from time to time. Distance shooting, one eye. Okay, now a lot of people when they come to the range, they'll hold the gun like this with the thumbs behind it or they'll hold this or their teacup. No, just like this here. Number one, you don't want your thumb back here because if you don't have your thumb proper, that slide's gonna come back and it's gonna, you're gonna get a nasty case of slide bite. I've seen people here at the range leave up out of here and have to go straight to uh, the emergency room to get stitches. So watch how you handle your weapon. Uh, Cause the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself and then you can't defend yourself. Number two, stance. When All you're right, standing. Today, now we're going to talk about stance. Whenever you're standing, uh, I've got Carrie. If you can wave at the camera, Carrie, wave. Being the camera Hi. person, there you go. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stand sideways, go down range because even though the weapon is unloaded, Unload it, unload it. I'm still not gonna flag it. What you do is, when you're shooting, you relax your knees. A lot of people will come in, carry if you can zoom in on the knee. Okay, I think I need some lotion. But what happens is they'll lock their legs and they'll lean back. Or what they'll do is they'll stand normal and they'll lean back. You wanna give yourself a little bit of bounce. That's to keep the blood flowing on the body body equally. Uh, what you want to do is, because uh, you got adrenaline and uh, it's kind of like gas in a car with a carburetor. For those of you that don't know what a carburetor is, children, that's how cars are the fuel injectors. Uh, what happens is you stand, you punch out, you lean forward and you bring that weapon up eye level with all three. Okay, you keep it moving, you keep your legs bent, with a little spring, you don't have to squat. Some people squat, some people just stand relaxed, lean forward. I tend to just a little bit. Um, some people do squat a little bit so that lowers your shooting profile in case you're ever engaged or have to engage in a, in a gunfight or in a self-defense situation. Now, once you've got your weapon on target, you take a breath, finger on the trigger, pull the trigger. Now, when you pull the trigger, the only thing that moves is the finger, okay? And you just want a little bit on the trigger. The first pad, it's just a matter of figuring out, because if you got too much finger on the trigger, if you can see here, I've seen people put that much finger in the trigger, and what they do is, it'll pull your shot to the right. You just want just the first tip, first tip. That's all you want, right here, just a little bit, okay? Now, another thing is you want to keep that front grip tight. If you don't, the gun's gonna go left. So you want to make sure you got equal pressure with a little bit extra pressure on the bottom two fingers. Again, that works for me. That may not work for you or somebody else. Out there. Basically, all your key commandos want to beat up on folks for their training techniques. Again, it works for me. May not work for you. It may not. It's like shoes. I wear Nike. You wear Reebok. Even though I'm not endorsed. Ha ha. 
Once you're done shooting your shot, let's say you're doing two shots. You shoot twice, you can do one of two things. You can bring the weapon to the crest, or you can go to a low ready. I tend to go to a low ready. So that way, number one, the gun doesn't get heavy. Number two, that still gets the muscles relaxed and the blood flowing. You can see, you know, you can assess. Uh, if you're ever in a critical situation, when you're shooting, bang, bang, all right, you want to assess, you don't bring your weapon way down, you bring it down a little bit and you assess, look over your shoulder, look back, maybe go towards cover or go towards some concealment. Uh, if the fight is done, of course, once you're done defending yourself and the fight is done, you go ahead and you call 911. For those of you who have shooter's insurance with, uh, with the USCCA, you call them next, uh, and we'll get into that later on. Um, that's today's tip. Again, click like, subscribe, tell your friends, support the social media. Always remember, stay in the yellow. Peace.